Shalom and good evening. We are thrilled you are here tonight. The reason we are so thrilled is because this pastor in this church believes wholeheartedly for the support of Israel in every way. So I want to bring up Mark Prouser. And Mark was presented to me as a man from, from the area of Shiloh. And Shiloh, as you know, your Jewish history and your Hebrew history and your biblical history, you know that Shiloh was at one point in time the place the Ark of the Covenant sat. And the people were blessed as the presence of God hovered over that place. So Mark comes from that city, or that, that settlement, and we know that the West Bank is a place where Christian tourists don't have a chance to go to. Mark comes, he is not representing the military. He's not bringing a perspective from the government. He's bringing a perspective as a writer and as someone who is head of security in this area which gives you a lot more involvement. He said to me, I might offend somebody. I said, hey, welcome to my church. <laughs> Come to one of my Sunday morning services. I offend people all the time, so you're in good, you're in good company. Without further ado, I want to give a warm welcome to Mark Prowler. Please, Mark, come up and give Good evening. Good evening. And first, I want to thank you all for letting me speak here. As the pastor said, my name is Mark Reviser. I'm married to Suri. I have four children, two boys, two girls. The same Shiloh, the first capital of Israel. But as the children of Israel came to our borders and crossed over, they made their way to Shiloh and set up the Ark of the Covenant, the Tabernacle, the Mishkan, as it's known to us. Same Shiloh of Elia Cohen, same Shiloh where Hannah prayed for a child, a child Samuel. That same Shiloh that in 1978 was reborn, that started with a few families and today has a waiting list to get into. That same Shiloh that during the previous intifada, when the Arabs and other enemies thought that they could scare us away, doubled in size. <coughs> the same Shiloh today, that has children singing and studying and industry, and agriculture. And the power that you have to see it to believe it. I had the privilege and honor in the years 1996 to 2006 to be in charge of the security with God's help of that region. That basically means that if there was any trouble, I had to be there. I was the sheriff. <laughs> you know, it's funny, I'm reminded that when, when I was, we made Aliyah to Israel in 1968. And when I was in kindergarten, or nursery school, I guess it was, the teacher, they asked, what do you all want to be when you grow up? And all the kids were answering, of course, sheriff, a fireman, a policeman, and all that. And back then I said, well, I want to go to Israel. And I want to settle the land. Of course, she sent a note home to my parents saying something's not right here. <laughs> but look at the way things turned out. I grew up and I became a policeman, a fireman, and a sheriff. 
and thank God. And when I say it was a privilege and an honor to be responsible for the security, to work with a new spirit that has been born in Israel, it's something that I can't always put into words. While working security, I admit that I developed an arrogance that is well known to a lot of people who visit Israel and have connection with Israelis, security people. And I'm sure a couple of my new friends here will agree with me. It's our problem. No one else can help. It's up to us. We'll take care of it. Don't worry. When the first Intifada started, I'm sorry, we'll call it the Intifada 2000, the area of Shiloh burned. Going to school, work, going out for an evening with your family became a life-threatening experience. We had shootings every day. Our children added a new word to their vocabulary, pigua, or attack. They learned that sometimes a teacher doesn't come back to school. Sometimes the boy that's sitting next to you in synagogue doesn't come to shul anymore.